Okay, hey guys, uh, welcome back. We're going to be playing some uh, Not For Broadcast. Uh, it's the new lockdown um, episodes they've done. I uh, haven't played the game since it came out, uh, but what we're going to do, I know that the uh, microphone's probably picking up the computer chipping away, so I'm going to uh, shut off the microphone and the camera for now. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how this goes. See what the new episodes are like, and uh, hopefully you enjoy them. This has no credibility, Jenny. No professionalism. It's not a mess. Everything is where it should be. It's ramshackle and characterful, and I expect you to know the difference. Of course, Megan's place looked lovely, but I can't see it, can I? <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. How's locking with the boyfriend going? Decided to take his chances on the wild streets, eh? Rather than endure another romantic comedy. Jeremy, Jenny says your hair looks stupid. Yes, I can hear her. As she says she's not talking to you. Yes, I know, I can hear her. Shall I count us in? Make it so. Okay, ten seconds. Break a leg, everyone. Preferably a furry one. Five, four, three, two, Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolfe, our main stories tonight. Snugglefucked? It's been almost five weeks since all the Mrs. Snugglehut's toys woke up simultaneously in factories worldwide and began searching for their husbands. The Mr. Snugglehut we have so short-sightedly destroyed. And now, as this photograph suggests, they may be changing tactics. Built to surprisingly traditional gender stereotypes, the Mrs. Snuggle Hugs have been arming themselves with a variety of household implements. All the more reason to make sure that cat flap is taped up good and tight. Armed with blunt weapons, the Mrs. Snuggle Hugs are only ankle height and therefore able to be kicked away easily by young, healthy individuals. They do, however, pose a particular risk to the elderly or those with pre-existing medical conditions like fatal bruise syndrome. Going stir crazy, with no signs of Mrs. Snugglehug's batteries running out and the government lockdown now in its 31st day, domestic relationships across the country are taking some unexpected turns. Dramatic reports are beginning to emerge of uncharacteristically bold behavior in homes across the country. And we're not talking about the model planes that occupy so much time in the Donaldson household. With dating options limited, many house sharers, in particular students, are finding solace in co-tenants they'd previously rejected as unfuckable, indulging in an activity that has become known as snuggle hugging. Locked and loaded. Same calligraphy Johnny Hansleaves seems to be taking his own unique approach to being locked in. 
Since checking into rehab, not much has been heard from the former role model, but this latest photo leaked by another resident today seems to confirm that all might not be well at Gentle Touches. Poor old Johnny seems to be back to his old ways, taking what looks like to me the electrifying mixture of zap, crackle, fizz and buzz, or as I call it, Thursday. The shape of things to come? In their own version of a lockdown for more than 45 years now, the descendants of Drs. David Wong and Ingrid Sporsborg and Horgensbord and their unfortunate team today managed to get a personal statement to the surface using flagellized imaging equipment. Many of the Sporsborg and Horgensbrood, as they've come to be known, have certainly captured the public imagination. With a recent vote naming Helvetica Sporsborg and Wongensford the most likely to survive a massive electric shock. Helvetica Sporsborg and Wongensford here with a little update from Dante's Taint. This year is going to be our biggest ever harvest and autumn's just two weeks away. Or at least that's what we think. There's no real day or night down here and all the clocks broke a long time ago. But if our calculations are right, we think that up there it is. Wednesday, the 4012th of January, or as you call it, Pit Mouth Day. Or possibly Boxing Day if we're a bit out. So, uh, happy Pit Mouth! I hope you get all the presents you asked for left under the Pit Mouth tree. I'm hoping to complete my collection of rocks. See you in September. Have to get out. It's hard to believe they've been down there so long now. But as everyone knows, time moves differently underwater, Jeremy. That's why goldfish are so stupid. That's right. And as anyone will tell you, the deeper the bowl, the thicker the goldfish. There's no denying the logic of that. Class war, a worrying turn today for the formerly rich as ever more punishing measures are announced, Alex. With the country becoming ever more hostile to the previously wealthy, those who managed to skip the country must be very grateful to the people who help them right now. This program has received reports of rich relatives on the run actually being filled with helium and released into the stratosphere. If those rich bastards think they're above the rest of us, why not give them a hand in getting there, Jeremy? And Advance speaks out, with the snuggle struggle proving a test to governments around the world. Advance HQ released a curious statement this afternoon. In the accompanying release, they asked us to stress that they have been listening and that this should be taken as a response to how the people read. We've certainly done our bit on this show to contribute to the political climate. But let's not forget, how we behave in our home lives is what really matters. Let's hope it's not just me who filled out that questionnaire, Jeremy, or we're all in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> let's play that statement. Let's play that statement. Good evening. In these difficult times, it's important that we all feel united, that we're all in this together. And for a short time, we must bear significant change. To help myself come to terms with these tough but transitory times, I've written a list of things that are just as temporary as all of this discomfort. I thought it would be helpful to share my list with all of you. Christmas with the in-laws. Your child's school play. Youth. Beauty. That phase you still don't talk about. Your New Year's resolution. Your husband's hairline. Your waistline. Your term in office. Your fleeting lifetime. And all of human endeavor. I hope my relatable list has allowed you to find reassurance, to know that just as these things pass us by, so too will this crisis. Together we will endure, as we always have. Thank you. Collectible stuff. Later tonight, Jeremy will be catching up with brave roving reporter Patrick Bannon while I check in with two friends of the program who find themselves stranded at opposite ends of the country. And then, in part three, there's going to be a quiz. Presumably because there's nothing more important going on that you might like to report on if you were saying a news program. And in a moment, we'll both be asking Sophia Remington how such a trusted brand can have made such a terrible manufacturing mistake. But what it describes here is help from popular psychic scientist Delia Lywell. Oh, I like her. <laughs> no, you don't. Why do you do that? <laughs> That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. <laughs>
get here? Where are we going? And most importantly, who's to blame? Joining us from her ranch in Arlingsfield, Milkirky, is the CEO of Remington Spist, internationally respected business Bengali, Sophia Remington. Thank you for having me, Megan. I'm a huge fan of your work. And from a crystal healing laboratory, what I assume is a garage in Upper Lowington, inexplicably renowned psychic scientist, Dr. Delia Lowell. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Sorry, us? Myself and the eminent uh, professors. Is that what you call the voices in your head? The voices to attract dead scientists. I don't really know why. The money? They express themselves to me through ethereal algebra and quadratic predictions. It's all very technical. No, it isn't. I concur. Miss Remington, the entire Snuggle Hugs range will surely go down as the biggest public relations disaster in history, won't it? Well, of course, that's one world record we would never have thought of playing. What can you say at a time like this? There is only one thing that can be said. I'm sorry. We're sorry. From everyone here at Remington's Fist, but especially the dedicated inventors and world-beating engineers at Remington's, we are deeply, deeply sorry. Who could have predicted that letting a child's toy learn how to love could have such unforeseen consequences? Now is Shelley. <laughs> We see you, Sophia Remington. You are greening by a metal vessel, and where you venture, you will see neither land nor sky. Is that supposed to be the future? Only the past is concrete. I remember being a child in my grandpa's workshop when he made the first dancing hangman toy. He put by my bed, and when I couldn't sleep, I'd wind it up and let it go, and I'd watch that happy little executioner just wiggle and wave his tiny noose and dance before my eyes. Grandpa sold thousands of them, on the quiet, obviously. And he used the money he made to found Rimming Toys, which is now just one small part of the global supermassive megacore that is Remington's Fist. Sadly, we lost Grandpappy along the way. He died in a fire at the preschool tobacco factory, another one of his pet projects. But we never lost his spirit of invention. Yes, uh, I'm not entirely certain what your grandfather's offensive toys have to do with the current predicament. The spirit of invention, Mr. Donaldson. The passion to create, to problem solve. And that is why I'm here today, to tell you about a brand new product we're launching simultaneously around the world from midnight tonight. <laughs> we said science! Science! <laughs> we hear its song on the breeze, its breath on the wind. Bart, under the covers. How does she do it? Well, well please, don't keep us in suspense any longer. It won't be my future she's making up next. Remington Fist is proud to present Snuggle Trap. For safety and security in these dangerous Each box of Snuggle Traps contains eight devices, all guaranteed to stop a Mrs. Snuggle Hug in a That's enough for a small lawn or four window boxes. And you want to know the best thing? They're only $129.99 a box. Now that is affordable peace of mind. <gasps> we see you, Jeremy Donaldson. Not now, honey, I'm mid-pitch. The best thing about Snuggle Traps is they're powered by next-generation Flardinium batteries. So however long the enemy lasts, these traps will outlast them. <laughs> we see you, Mr. Donaldson. You are screaming and yelling. Your friends are crying. Oh my god, I just got chills. Did anyone else just get chills then? <laughs> I think I did. I think it's more concerned. I think I'd be more concerned about these traps. Um, quickly, before we go to the break, um, these appear to be attractively repackaged landmines. Aren't they dangerous, say, to children? Oh, hell yeah. These are not toys. But they're explosive fun. Sophia Remington, Dr. Delia Lowell, thank you for joining us. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at the situation across the country tonight. Don't go away. We'll be back after these bandages. We'll be back after these bandages. Was that all right? Oh, yes, Doctor, that was exactly what we <coughs> We should make an interesting dinner guest. Do you think so? I think I'd rather spend the evening shoving Delia's sacred crystals up my sceptical arsehole.
decided to come home. Listen, I'll call you back at the next break and we can talk about how I get me job back. Cheers, Alex. See you, mate. Yeah, well, it's been a long time coming. No, oh, exactly. You've said it, I've said it. He must know. He's not stupid. I just don't want it getting back to him that it came from us. Hey, no, 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 Jenny. You're not backing out on me now. We're in this together. Yeah, we'll get him. I've made the cake. You're on the blues. I've got no idea how old he is. 17? Yeah, yeah, ready. <clears throat> okay, coming back. In five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Ruth. Now it's time to take a trip around the country to hear how the lockdown might impact the nation from some friendly faces. Joining me are respected academic Katie Brightman and author of Alan James's Kites, Alan James. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Megan. Thanks, Megan. It really is a pleasure, Katie. I enjoyed our little heated encounter. I wish I could say the same. So first off, Katie, how are you coping? I'm holding up okay. The lockdown directive was so sudden that, like many people, I haven't been able to get home. Oh no, what happened? I was staying at a hotel after an international policy convention, and we had a particularly uh, heavy night out. You know what economists are like. <laughs> Notoriously hate splitting the bill. <laughs> and I overslept. And as you can imagine, I've been here ever since. But there are certainly people much worse off than me. Exactly. My tour has been cancelled indefinitely. And I've had to refund every single ticket, even the cheap seats. Oh, Alan, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. People are being quite rude about it. They don't seem to realise I've already spent it filling the beach house with speech. The crisis claims yet another victim. So, this is just a reminder that my book, Alan James's Reich, is now available in paperback. Unbelievable. What was that? You. You're unbelievable. So, Katie, how do you think this might affect the economy? Should we be worried? Very, Megan. Not to sound dramatic, but this could be catastrophic. Unemployment has skyrocketed, and frankly, it will be a miracle if a lot of businesses can survive this. There you go, scaremongering again, spreading this latest liberal hoax. That's what they want. They want us quiet. They want us compliant. And they want us inside. A hoax? How on earth can you say that, Alan? Well, I haven't actually seen one of these supposed toys. Have you? Well, no, but... Did you know 3,000 people die every year from regular toys? That's a lot of people. And this is no different. You're just as likely to be hunted down by a yo-yo or a tennis racket. He makes an excellent and persuasive point, Katie. Don't listen to her, Katie. The press are the enemy of truth. She's agreeing with you, Alan, you absolute shit! Well, then I must be wrong. Alan... Are you now recounting your statement that these toys aren't dangerous? People are saying they're just like normal toys, and that simply isn't true. Corrupt media lies. And Katie, how do you respond to Alan's claims that Mr. Snuggle Hugs might be dangerous after all? I suppose I... I guess I'm agreeing with him. Thank you, Katie. I appreciate your support. A lot of folks are saying this Mrs. Snuggle Hugs situation will all blow over, but it won't. Yes, right, exactly. We need decisive action from the government. We need huge financial support to protect our workers and our businesses. We need to support the vulnerable and we need... To, to repent. Exactly right, Katie. We brought it on ourselves with all our liberal indulgences like our faith and health care. We need to act now and begin sacrificing our firstborn or as a push of a loved family pet. Absolutely, Alan. If we can all successfully come together as a community and perform the ritual, hopefully we will appease the great ancient. Katie, could it be any worse? Luckily, over the past few years under advance, they've invested heavily into health. So the system can actually bear the strain. Is it lucky that the Llama Lords have unleashed a horde of man-made monsters on its own people to conceal the enemy within? Will you just stop for five fucking seconds? The Global Alliance of Fish People are amassing an army... Me, 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 Amassing an army to kidnap... Me, 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 That's you. That's what you sound like. 
Yes, you do. You do, Alan. You do sound like that. And that's why no one wants to be your friend. And that's why you've got loads of friends. No, you haven't. I don't think you do, Alan. Yeah, stop lying, Alan. Yes. Not lying. You are. Oh, good one. Oh, good one. Well, I'm telling. Alan James, Alan, you know Tracy what they Brightman, say about thank you for Alan. joining me. Some real food for thought there from two of the Territory's leading minds. Any moment now, I'll be heading over to Jeremy, who is going to be bringing us an up-to-the-minute report of the status of the nation. Over to you, Jeremy. Thank you for what I'm sure was a reasonable debate which really contributed to the national conversation. Next, out on the streets, someone who's always doing exactly that. It's Patrick Brennan. Exactly Are you there, Patrick? Uh, hello, Jeremy. Yes, hello. I'm here. I'm here live. Um, apologies for the quality of the broadcast today. Um, couldn't find any cameramen or, or women uh, brave enough to come and join me, so uh, I'm out here on my own. Right, and uh, can you tell us what it's like out there? Yep, I can. It's uh, uh, As you can see behind me, the streets are currently completely deserted. Uh, so my question, Jeremy, is just how long? I mean, could there be danger lurking just around the corner, waiting to end the fledgling career of this young, promising journalist before his, his full potential is even realised? When he died, underappreciated by management, and frankly, if you ask me, very, very much underpaid. I don't think there's any danger of that, Patrick. Um, what's that on your jacket there? Oh, that, that's actually a sponge. Uh, I've made it, what I've done here is made a snuggle-proof jacket, Jeremy. Uh, the network didn't bother sending me any PPE, uh, so I've been forced to improvise. Um, in fact, showing the sort of resourcefulness that would make me an ideal candidate for, I don't know, for example, an anchor position starting whenever they'd like. From your point of view, Patrick, um, just how safe are our streets? Uh, not, not, not safe at all, Jeremy, not safe at all. Uh, I'd recommend people staying inside, uh, following government advice, and not putting themselves at any risk at all. Uh, unless, of course, uh, like me, it's for groundbreaking journalism reasons. Mm -hmm. And just where are you, Patrick? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in the street, on the street. Which street? Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I think I'm, I'm struggling to hear you, actually, uh, Jeremy, there. Which street? Which street are you on? Oh, which, which street am I on? <laughs> um, I'm, oh, God. Um, I'm just looking for a sign. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on uh, 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 Bannon Avenue. Bannon Avenue? Yep. Bannon Avenue. Yeah, no, I can hear you fine. Yep, I'm on Bannon Avenue on the sign, it says there. Like Patrick Bannon? Oh, yeah, that is uh, that's that is like, that's strange, that's a weird sign. I don't know what's going on there. Where are you really? I'm on Bannon, um... All right, fine, I'm not on Bannon Avenue, I'm on... I'm at home, to be honest. I'm... All right, fine, well, I mean, I'm in my bathroom, technically, but, you know, I, I couldn't face it, to be honest, mate. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's terrible out there, I don't want to go outside. They're everywhere. I'm sorry for lying. We don't expect any less of you, Patrick. We don't expect any less of you, Patrick. Can you hear that tap? I can, yes. Uh, I'm no expert, Patrick, but it sounds unmistakably like a, a tiny fist tapping on your door there. Oh, fuck, it does. Oh, fuck, Jeremy, shit, no! Oh, bollocks, Perhaps there's a small queue of tiny fists, each wielding a different gendered household implement. Ready to bash yeah. in the heads of lying little roving reporters. So you're lying, aren't you? Oh shit, fucking, okay, fucking, listen, listen to me, listen to me, you bastards. If you're out there, just piss off, you little fucking snuggled fuck. I'm too talented to die. Oh, too talented to die. No. Okay, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Talk on, talk on. Don't worry, hey, Patrick. Uh, I'd say you've got a few seconds before they break their way in there and finish you off. What do you see, Patrick? What do you see, Patrick? I see only the death. I see only the state Oh, God, no. Come into all this. Come into all this. No, you fucking little shit. Fucking Thank you, Patrick, for that report, showing the nation, and more importantly, management, just where you belong. It's time for another break, but uh, when we come back, 
So I'll be happy to take your mind off the world for a little while. And who knows? Maybe even bring you a few smiles. Join us after this. The damn right. Yeah, I had them delivered. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not going to. Don't have to. No, you're being a child. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. No, no, oh. Five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly. Well, welcome back anyway. We know isolation isn't easy, so finally tonight, we have something a bit different for you. Even though some people have heard it's not our job to entertain the public with absolute nonsense, other, more important people overruled those people. So it's time to find out who will National Nightly win and who will National Nightly lose. So, how do we play? Well, joining me as a man who knows all about playing, it's Tommy Harris. Hello, Tommy. All right, Johnny. It's good to see you. And uh, how are you finding the lockdown, Tommy? Would you mean lockdown? The enforced isolation of everyone in the country. Ah, yeah, I think I heard about that, actually, yeah. You're in bed, Tommy. Yeah, you called during that time, so... Of course, that's my fault. So, um, why don't you tell us how the game is played? Well, it's pretty simple, Jeremy, you sausage. I'm going to ask contestants from around the territory three questions about what else yours truly. And those people are going to get a chance to win a very special prize. And what are they paying for, Tommy? Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Jeremy. Jeremy. <sighs> Thank you. This. <sighs> what is that? It's my athletic support, Jeremy. Oh. But I've signed it, so. Oh, well then. What a fantastic prize. Have we got anybody waiting to win this once-in-a-lifetime prize, Jerry and Jimmy? I believe we have Angie on the line. Um, how do you feel about winning this man's old pants, Angie? I've never been so excited, Jeremy. And can I just say, I love you, both of you. Well, you've said it now, haven't you? Oh, uh, Angie, I love you, in a way. Tell us about yourself, Angie. Well, what can I say? My name is Angie, <laughs> always has been. Um, I'm a human woman, and my dental hygiene has been described as acceptable. Brilliant! Right, well, shall we get this shambles on the way? Absolutely, John. Can I get 30 seconds on the clock, please? We haven't got a clock. Yeah, I did ask for a clock. So, well, you know. um, why don't you start, and I'll stop you when it inevitably becomes unbearable to watch. I love it. All right, here we go. Time starts no, 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 now. Question one. When is my birthday? The 13th of August at 7.19 a.m. That is absolutely correct. Question two. What? I said, what is my favourite colour? Crushed praline four. Correct. The colour of my nipples. And finally, Angie dear, what is my star sign? That's a trick question. You were born outside of the human understanding of the cosmos. Unbelievable. That is correct. Stop the clock. Wow, that really was tough to watch. How did you do, Johnny? Well, Angie, my love, you got every single question right. Which, of course, means you lose and win absolutely nothing. Thanks for playing, Angie. Bye. Do we have another contestant on the line at Jelly Bean? We do indeed. 
We should have Sonia Hartleach. Are you there, Sonia? <laughs> of course I am, Jamie, darling. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Sonia. Oh, there you are, Tommy. Mwah. Let me guess, you work in theatre, don't you? Is it that obvious? <laughs> what gave it away? Was it the glamour or poise? <laughs> it certainly wasn't your inherent sense of humility. <laughs> <laughs> Tell, Tell us about yourself, Sonia. Well, if you must play this game, <laughs> I am a theatrical agent. I represent the likes of Rudy Beefman, Samuel Coffee Cup, and Jodie Carpet Burn, amongst others. And how's the lockdown affected you, Sonia? Oh, well, they may have closed the theatres, shut the studios, and boarded the cinemas, but they won't get me that easily. How are you managing without any work? Due to a savvy clause in all of my artist contracts, I am able to claim my 15% from their unemployment benefit. <laughs> wow, that certainly is sharp. Standard stuff, standard stuff. And can I ask, where are you speaking to us from? Well, I work from home, you know, to keep costs down. And uh, who's this? Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, when they gave the order, I was actually mid-meeting with a client, so we've been isolated together. No fucking way! What the fucking fuck? Is that Tommy Harris? I'm a huge fan. Can I just tell you how bloody brilliant you are? Actually, Jeff, we're about to play a game, aren't no, no, we, Tommy? No. We've got time, we've got time. Well, if it's not too bold, I think I am in love with you, Mr. No, Harris. No, it's not too bold. That's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, I, I'd love to show you some of my stuff. I've been working on some new shit. Well, at least you're already aware. During lockdown, uh, we've been workshopping some of Jeff's ideas for much younger children, haven't we? People still let you know their children, do they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I've been developing uh, some shows for younger children. <laughs> well, we'd love to see it, wouldn't we, Gerbil? Absolutely dying to. <laughs> right, so, what do kids love? Uh, timely just put payments from their absent fathers. Shallow and overproduced musical numbers. That's right. Animals! So, I'm trying to address the things that kids need to know, but through a medium that they'll understand. Do you understand? I think, yes. I think so, yes. Jeff's one of my best clients, aren't you? I am. Yeah, yeah. So, the first one we've been working on is called The King of the Jungle's Mortgage Repayments. It's about a lion who's having problems with his interest rates. I see. Does he have a broker? Uh, he does. Yes, yes. He's a porcupine. How did you know that? Well, your work is universal, darling. It speaks oh. to people. <laughs> I'm going to say something to you, mate. I think you're onto something, yeah? <laughs> the bear, the bear. Oh, yes, bear. yes, yes, yes. Right. <clears throat> this one is much better. So, this one tells the tale of Mr. Bear. Now, Mr. Bear is a very sad bear because all of the other bears don't think that it'll amount to much and they tell him that his plays are lazy and derivative. I think you're under something there. Now, Mr. Bear is a tragic figure. Picture this. He's at his lowest ebb. The trees are closing in. He can't even face his salmon, can he? But then he meets someone that will change his life forever. This is Fucking gripping. That's right. He meets a wise old octopus who takes him under his wing and says, No, Mr. Bear, don't be sad. You're not like all the other bears. You have this ambition and these dreams. Such fucking dreams. I think I love you, Jeff. <laughs> and what you need, bear, says the octopus, probably doing an eight-armed gesture or something. <laughs> what you need to do to find happiness in this crazy old forest is you need to set yourself more realistic goals. It's called Mr. Bear Lowers His Expectations. Wow, you really have taken yourself to new depths. And what do you oh. want children to take away from this? Oh, fuck shit. Shit, fuck. What? I said a more realistic worldview. Are you all right, Jamboree? It's Jeffrey. 
My name is Jeffrey Donington. Uh, no, stop. How does it end? We need to know how it ends. Well, all the animals learn a thing or two about inevitable mediocrity. Yeah, and Mr. Bear settles down near to his parents' cave, stops trying to make his band happen, and he goes into, into bear telemarketing. It becomes a bear maths teacher. Oh, and we end... Oh, 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 we end on a big musical number. Oh, there's dancing. Uh, it's very repetitive, so it's catchy but not too challenging. Um, well, if you like, I could go and get my boom box. Yeah, uh, you know, I might be able to... Hang on, uh, can we get Angie back? Why not? The more the merrier, as they say at orgies. Right, I'll just fill then, shall I? Coming up in a moment, it's the world premiere that nobody saw coming. Lie! Or wanted. At all. Right. I can only apologise in advance for what we're all about to endure. Could you turn this shit in thing? Ah! <laughs> well, there's all sorts of creatures down on Dangly Doodle Farm. Like wise old Mr. Octopus with way too many arms. There's Mr. Pig and Mr. Cow, they're always in good mood. But that's cause they don't know they'll soon be sliced up into food. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your hopes go to turn into despair. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your dreams go to die. Wants to go to the moon, he'll end up as a bus driver soon. Mr. Porcupine thinks he'll read the news at nine. He'll end up as a janitor who stinks of turpentine. Mr. Tiny Mouse thought he'd own a massive house. Ended up in a bedsit where he can't control the louse. Mr. Horse thought he'd go into professional sports. Now he's an alcoholic and he's on his third divorce. Mr. Bear. What's that over there? That's the place your life becomes an endless questionnaire. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your hopes go to die. Lower your expectations. Maybe you could get a job in telecommunications. No matter how you try, you'll never reach the League of Nations. The best you'll get is middle rank in trading operations. So lower your expectations. You'll never win an Oscar, so there's no congratulations. The future that is coming will not meet specifications. And no amount of visualization will save you from your own deterioration. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's a tramp who thought he'd be a multi-millionaire. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where self-esteem goes to die. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's the disappointment that is waiting everywhere. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your sneeze go to die. That's where your dreams go to die. That's where dreams go to die. Thanks all for what I'm sure is bound to be a classic of children's entertainment. But now, let's see how it's really done. Before we wrap up the news tonight, I just wanted to spend a moment talking to you directly. A final thought, if you will, just for you, Alex. You see, I know you think it's gotten complicated back at the old homestead, but uh, there's something you should know. You like to think you've got the family rules, the feelings have cooled, and you're just really cute. You think you're even handed by To think you got it under control Well if that was your goal You better be wrong Did you have a few too many At the watering pool You clearly love your daughter more Now Chris and Sam 
that's me. <laughs> well, that's all we have time for tonight on the National Nightly News. We'll be back tomorrow when Jeremy will be wrestling an alpaca and I'll be naked. I'm Megan Wolf. Have a treacle cool night. Oh, you just give me that beer. I'm fucking famished. First, I'd like to take this opportunity to reassure you all that we will be staying on air and maximizing revenue. What is that, Pat? Do you think I'd be happy with that? You're out of your mind. seen our symbols on your walls. We are the resistance, and it's time you knew the truth. What do you mean I can't say that? Advance is lying to you. How can we help you if we don't know who you are? More than all of this, he was my laughter, my confidant. My friend. The elderly are not a burden. So, Mum's made the decision to unburden us, and now we have the chance to start a family. The membership card is an ID card, no matter what they tell you. We are getting reports of... Oh, God. Millions of deaths across the continent. Doesn't your family deserve a nutritious life? Understand this. There is something wrong with the food. No more! I'm gonna look at this shit! You are not afraid. Hi, I'm Dan. I'm Alex. I'm Andy. And I'm Jay. And we are the only members of the Not Games team that are even vaguely camera friendly. And in my case, very vaguely.